Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be looking at an example involving the superposition flow. And we are going to go straight to the most difficult example which is the combination of uniform flow, doublet and also irrotational vortex. Now let's take a look at our problem. First of all, what you have here is a cylinder. And this cylinder is rotating at N equal to 1000 RPM. This cylinder has the diameter of 200 millimeter. And it has the free stream velocity that is U infinity equal to 4.5 meter per second. And the question is asking you to find two things. First is to find the location of stagnation point. And the second one is to find the minimum pressure on the cylinder. Now I know that we have a rotating cylinder with a uniform flow around it. But at the moment, we do not know what that flow looks like because we don't know whether the stagnation point is on the surface or off the surface. And to find that out, we need to figure something that is this relationship. We need to know whether gamma is greater than 4 pi u infinity rc or not. So let's write that equation here. So we need to find is gamma is greater than 4 pi mu infinity rc or not. If this is true, then we have a flow that looks something like this, where the stagnation point is here, that is off the surface. And if gamma is less than 4 pi mu infinity rc, we will have a flow that looks something like that. Let's go back to our example. I believe now that we already have the value for u infinity that is 4.5 meter per second and we also know rc that is 0 0.1 meter. However, we do not know what is our gamma. And I think I've shown you the equation for gamma when I introduce you to irrotational flow. Now let's take a look at the irrotational vortex equation, if I can find it here. So there you go, this is your gamma. Gamma is equal to the integration of velocity times ds. So let's write that again. So gamma is equal to the full integration of velocity dot ds. And we only need to do this because gamma is not given to us. If gamma is directly given, then we do not have to use this equation. So the information that we have now is only this one, which is n equal to 1000 RPM. And to use this equation, we can do integration from 0 to 2 pi. Velocity is the velocity of the cylinder. And when we have rotational velocity, the velocity is simply omega times rc. So let's say that this is our rc. And omega times rc, we get the velocity. And the ds is actually rc times d theta. As we know for small element, s equal to r theta. So because the radius is fixed, that is the rc, so I replace r with rc. And what we have here is the integration of omega times rc square d theta. 0 to 2 pi, which will end up to be gamma rc square theta, 0 to 2 pi, and what we have here is gamma equal to omega times 2 pi times rc square. So with this equation, we can definitely find our value of gamma. And gamma is equal to omega is simply 2 pi times the rpm over 60. So 2 pi times 1000 RPM, so this is 1000, divide by 60 times 2 pi times RC is 0 0.1 meter. So times 0 0.1. So let's solve for gamma first. So this is 2 pi square times 1000 divide by 60. And I think this is 0 0.1 square, RC is RC square, times 0 0.01, 
this is 6.58 and the unit will be velocity times distance so this is meter square per second and now let's see if this is greater than 4 pi u infinity times rc so 4 pi u infinity times rc that is 4 pi u infinity is 4.5 let me confirm that that's right 4.5 times 0 0.1 so that will be 4 pi times 4.5 times 0 0.1 that is 5.65 so definitely gamma is greater than 4 pi u infinity rc okay so this is the comparison which means that the stagnation point is of the cylinder now that we know this we kind of have a rough idea what the flow looks like isn't it so the flow will look something like this this is your cylinder and let me use another color and the flow looks something like this And this is your stagnation point. Okay, the stagnation point is away from the cylinder. And if we consider theta starts from here and goes counterclockwise, that means that our stagnation point is at 270 degree. So if I were to write the coordinate here, so my stagnation point is at let's say this distance is rs okay so rs and 270 degrees and using the equation that we have found before it is actually possible to find the distance that is the rs and we know that this rs must be greater than the rc which is 0 0.1 so let's find the equation i think it's somewhere here It should be this equation. So the equation is sine theta equal to gamma over 4 pi u infinity rc. Only that this time we cannot use rc, we have to use rs. So sine theta is equal to gamma over 4 pi u infinity rs. And to find rs, this will be gamma over 4 pi pi u infinity sine theta and we know that this theta is 270 degrees because we know the location of our stagnation point now and sine 270 is negative 1 okay so this will be what is our gamma gamma is 6.58 over 4 pi u infinity is 4.5 sine theta is minus 1 so of course we're going to have negative here this will be 4 pi times 4.5 6.58 divided by answer this is 0 0.116 meter so my actual location for stagnation point is at Stagnation is at 0 0.116 and 270 degrees. This is how we write the coordinate in polar form. So it makes sense actually that 0 0.116 is greater than 0 0.1 which is the radius of the cylinder. So the calculation and the physical view of our flow now match correctly. And I believe with that we have found the solution for question number one. And the question for number two is the minimum pressure on the cylinder. When you take a look at this figure, where do you think the minimum pressure is? I would say that the minimum pressure should be on top here. Why is that? Because at the bottom of the cylinder, this is very close to the stagnation point. And stagnation points means that the velocity is zero. When the velocity is low, it means that the pressure is high. So that is definitely the point of maximum pressure. So the point of minimum pressure is just the opposite of the maximum pressure. And 
definitely this cylinder will produce lift. Okay, so this is my P minimum. And I know that the position here is at theta equal to 90 degrees. And in order to find pressure, of course, we do know the velocity, that is the V theta. We can find the equation using the string function. So to relate that, we can use the Bernoulli equation. Always use Bernoulli equation to relate velocity and pressure. But in order to use the Bernoulli equation, we need to know the two points that we can use as reference. Of course, point number one will be here. And point number two, I would say somewhere here. Somewhere that is away from the cylinder itself. And we know that the free stream velocity here is u infinity that is equal to 4.5 meter per second. Now, let's write our Bernoulli equation. P infinity. And remember, infinity refers to the point that is away from the cylinder. Plus half rho u infinity square equal to, now, this is the point that is on the cylinder. So this is P minimum plus half rho, the velocity is the tangential velocity because we do not have the radial velocity. So this is V theta square at 90 degrees. So to solve this equation, first of all, let's consider the pressure at this point is zero gauge or one ATM, okay? So I'm going to cancel this out. This makes our job easier. And to find the P minimum, this will be equal to half times rho. This is U infinity square minus V theta square at 90 degrees. So this is one over two. Let's do 1.2 as the density of the air. My free stream velocity is 4.5 square. If you forgotten, this is our free stream velocity, 4.5 meter per second. And this is minus V theta square at 90 degrees. Now, where is the equation for V theta? Let's go back to our previous notes. So V theta for that superposition is this equation. That is minus 2u infinity sine theta plus gamma over 2 pi rc. And our theta should be 90 degrees. So let's write that equation. So this is minus 2u infinity sine 90 degrees minus gamma over 2 pi rc. And our rc is 0.1. And let's not forget the square here. And this is equal to 0 0.6, 4.5 square, 20.25. Let's solve this. This is 4.5. So 2 times 4.5 sine 90. This is minus minus 9. And gamma is... 6.58 2 times pi 2 pi times 0 0.1 let's write this properly this is 6.58 divided by answer minus 10.47 square and this is equal to minus 9 minus answer square 20.25 minus answer times 0 0.6 and we'll end up with minus 215.4 pascal and i believe that this will be the final answer for question number two that is to find the minimum pressure on the cylinder so I hope now you can see that the equation that we've obtained from the superposition flow can be used in actual engineering problems. And this is very important because the initial objective for studying the potential flow is to simplify the flow and obtain the solution that might be possible to be used in the actual world. And one of the most complex potential flow that we cover in this chapter is the combination of uniform flow plus doublet plus irrotational vortex.
So as usual, do this example again and again until you understand where each of the terms is originated from and how to use it in order to solve the problem. That is all from me for now and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.